So there are a lot of very interesting uh, new eye products being developed all the time uh, by the chemists and all the manufacturers, which is great news for artists because we're always getting new things to try and interesting, unusual possibilities. And one of my favorite things that has come along are the Creative Color Aqua Bricks. And you can see them here. They look like uh, maybe a, water, a large watercolor pan, but they're actually a drawing stick in a brick. And you can draw with them just like a crayon. And you can also paint with them like as if it was watercolor. And since they're water soluble, you can also paint with them after they're on the page. And you can do a lot of other neat things with them too. So um, a lot of people think that these might be similar to the aqua sticks, which are water soluble crayons. They look the same, but they're not. These are, are very much a uh, very robust product. They're very difficult to wear down. And uh, the colors are extremely intense. So they're really their own unique uh, product. Plus the shape makes them very different as well. So <clears throat> I'm now going to do a couple of figures uh, using these really fun products, the Aqua Sticks and the Aqua Bricks. The Aqua Sticks uh, I've talked about before. And it's a water-soluble crayon, wax, uh, and yet it's water-soluble. I don't know how they do that. I think it has something to do with beeswax. Um, anyway, so but when, we're, when you're using new materials, uh, it's a good idea to do some tests. Now, sometimes you get colors. You know, the colors as they are when you take them out of the box is not necessarily the way they look on the paper. So it's a good idea to do some tests and see what your colors are, right? So I can see that's a Prussian blue. It's one of my favorite colors. This is going to be, this is more like a thalocyanine green. That's pretty close to an ultramarine, I'd say. And uh, so it's a good idea to do some color tests with any color you're not sure of how it's going to look on the page. A very good idea. So I'm going to take that Prussian blue. I'm going to take this what pretty much appears to be cadmium yellow medium. And A little. That's an olive green. I think I'm going to stick with the the this one, thalocyanine green, yellow. I've got those three colors, and then maybe I think just in case I might want some yogurt, uh, some ochre. I had yogurt for lunch, so I must have it on the brain some ochre. And uh, so I'm, you know, there's a preparation process, uh, which you go through, which you always should go through before you hit the paper. Okay, but still, I'll keep those handy in case I need some other colors. Now, the, one of the interesting things that you can do with these is you can twist and turn these. And, and that's the way I'm going to work with them. Actually, can I have that piece of paper back? Thank you. Um, this is like the Letterman show. OK. Can you say that on camera? I just want to show you that you can use these on their edge. You can use them on their side, the wide side. You can use them on the medium side. You can use them on the end. And as you've already seen, wet and dry. 
So they can do a lot of different things. And I like to take advantage of all of those options. Thank you. Now, in something like this, I start with the lightest color. And even though I'm going to wet this, you will see that whereas it will start off wet, after a very brief period, because after all, it's not a brush, it's a stick, it dries off again. Another thing I want to mention is I'm working on a, coal, uh, on a hot press paper, which um, I don't normally do, but these seem to uh, ask for a smooth paper. Comes with a little holder, I'm going to use it to keep it a little cleaner. to keep a firm grip. So that is a mass drawing with a light color. It just gives me a kind of location on the page. I'm going to go to a kind of a medium color, which is going to be my green, for some of my contours. But while I'm doing the contours, because this functions like a brush as well, I can also at times, you know, use it thickly and actually create the impression of some shading as well. As I twist and turn it. And that twisting and turning also gives very interesting qualities to the line. Needless to say, like everything else, it's really worth doing this more than once to get the hang of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush, make sure it's clean, because when you've got nice bright yellows, you want to make sure your brush is really good and clean. And then I can brush some of this water-soluble aqua brick around and start to develop some shadows. And what I love, I love products, I love materials that you can work fast with, because I like to work fast. And I think that you get the freest effect when you work fast. And that's kind of my mantra is the freedom. So that's getting pretty nice looking. And if I want to add some additional color, I can take it right from the brick itself. So I like that. But I would like some stronger contrast, so I'm going to go for the Prussian blue. And the nice thing is you can draw right in over this, right into the wet, and define those contours a little more definitely, which just 
adds a lot of sort of strength to the drawing, I think. So these lines are enhancing and, strength and strengthening the whole impression. Then I'm going to take my brush one more time. And pick up some of those shadows again. Take the Maybe I'll take a little straight from the brick itself. And get a little stronger contrast in there. Now, a lot of people think with watercolor, if you make a mistake, there's nothing you can do about it. But that's not true. For example, I just, my hand slipped and some of that got in there, but a little bit of water and I can lift it totally away. So I'm glad that happened so you could see that.